the first time I wore a bald head, it was on accident. So I'm 18. At the time I have hair, right? Or enough hair so that I could grow it out and it wouldn't look like uh, George Jefferson. Um, light skinned dude, always kept a haircut, right? So I'm talking to this girl on Facebook. We're gonna go on a date. So my thought process is, hey, I have these clippers at home. It's been a little while since a haircut. I'm broke, I can't go to the barber shop to pay them to do it for me. I'm gonna cut my own hair. I'm gonna look it up on YouTube and I'm gonna cut my own hair. Didn't work out that way. So I look up this tutorial and if I can find it, I'm gonna show you the exact video that I watched and tried to imitate. Um, fucked my hair up, right? So I'm like, damn, this fade didn't work out how I thought it would. So I'm like, I gotta shave it off. You gotta make the most of what you're presented with, right? So I shaved my head. Luckily for me, all of my idols are bald. So like The Rock, at the time I was watching Brandon Carter, Vin Diesel, Jason Statham, like all the stereotypical bald chads are like my, my father, you know what I'm saying? Like all the people that I look up to or you know, have taken inspiration from, they're bald. So I'm like, easy clap, I'm gonna shave my head. A lot of people would have called the date off. I'm not saying I'm built different or anything like that, but something that I can definitely say, and this is the takeaway that I want you guys to kind of, you know, draw inspiration from, is you have to make the most of whatever situation you're put into or you find yourself in. Some people call that destiny or fate. I don't necessarily believe in destiny or fate, but things have a causal relationship, cause and effect. Because I fucked my hair up, I had to shave my head. Because I was confident in my shaved head, I was able to have a good date. And because I had a good date, you know what I'm saying? So all that to say that cause and effect because you are presented with a situation that is difficult, you don't necessarily have to just give up or roll over and let shit defeat you. You make the most of it. That story does not end there. When you shave your head, your hair eventually grows back, right? So I'm thinking, okay, my hair is going to grow back, back to normal. I notice, looking in the mirror, that my temples are very noticeably thinner than the rest of the hair around it. You don't necessarily see that when your hair is longer. So if you have hair loss, you're really not gonna notice it till shit is over with pretty much, is what I've gathered. You know, you can watch more plates, more dates if you're interested in more info. But my temples were really thin and I'm like, well shit, I can't grow it back now. I'm just gonna keep shaving it. I was 18 at the time, bro. Most people like feel like being bald is a death sentence for some reason never looked at it that way i just looked at it like look pragmatically my temples are thin i'm not gonna grow my hair out i can't i can't go to the barber shop how do you line up a, a mcdonald's arch you can't do that so i'm just gonna shave it off and save myself a bunch of money so what ends up happening from there is that i want to get back into shape I'd always been that guy in high school that was bigger and stronger than everybody because I lifted weights, you know what I'm saying? Like I was always that physically active kid that didn't do nothing but worked out. That was my thing. The, the, I guess you could say <laughs> it was the gym cell before gym cells were cool. You didn't have nothing to do but work out and play video games, right? But I had fallen out of that around 16, 17 and gotten out of shape a little bit. So I'd started going on runs, doing workouts in the parks, on the monkey bars, pull-ups, push-ups, dips, uh, lunges, shit like that, sprints. And I'd found myself around more and more people that wanted to join in with me because I would go on like real long runs and then post about it on Facebook and things like that. And then I found more and more people wanting to get into shape with me. And I thought back to that and I'm like, that's kind of what I'm doing now. You know, back then I was very true to myself in my uh, formative years, I guess you could say. I was very true to myself. I made tons of mistakes and I'm not saying I'm not a more developed, more well-rounded human being now, but intrinsically I've always been someone that wants to make the best out of a situation, one, and two, just uplift those around him. I was going on runs with dudes, you know, they would throw up and shit like that, but 
I'd always run at their own pace if it was someone a little slower than me. Or if someone was way faster than me, I'd try to keep up with them and then they would, you know, return the favor, run at my pace and so on. The most successful periods of my life were periods where I was being true to myself. And when I wasn't, that's when it was the most chaotic. That's when I found myself beholden to relationships with people. I didn't have any business being beholden to. Being in friendships, I didn't have any business being a part of. And that's where a lot of introspection had to take place for me to get up out of there and be in a place where I can do what I'm doing now. In the more chaotic period, you could say, I was living the life that you could expect from someone of my upbringing, of my circumstances. But when I was being true to myself, when I saw that star in the sky and I said, that's me, that's what makes me special. And I was living in accordance with that, in accordance with virtue. My life was beautiful. You are not what you go through. You are not what your circumstances are. You are what you make of it. I vehemently disagree with people who say that, oh, because this happened to me, this is the way that I am now. Bullshit. That's complete bullshit in my opinion. I think that every human is special. Like we each have a star. All we have to do is find it. The only people that aren't special are people that believe that they're not, so they act like they're not, or the people that go out of their way to tear down others, to make them feel as worthless as they do. They're subhumans. They're no better than animals. All they do is eat shit and sleep and destroy things around them. They have no virtue. And that's not to say that I'm more virtuous than anyone else, but these people have no virtue. They have no belief system. They're just fucking animals, basically, like I said. But each of us are special. Most of us aren't like that. You have something that makes you special. You have something that where when you do it and you live in accordance with that, your life is way better than it otherwise would be. So there's a chapter in Berserk called Sparks where it's an inner monologue that Guts is having where he meditates on his life and he's just thinking about how all the experiences that defined his life, the people that defined his life, they're all illuminated by the sparks that were created on the battlefield. And what he had in his hand that created those sparks was his sword, obviously. And he's like, the pursuit of betterment, the pursuit of happiness. It's caused by my wanting to be a better fighter. And this sword has been with me in my pursuit of being a better fighter, of being a better man. This is what makes me happy. Find that spark, y'all, like we each have it. Live in accordance with it and your life will be so much better.